Brocam here. What's one thing that all of these radios have in common? Well, besides the fact that quite a few of them are just cheap Chinese radios that I've gotten off of Timu, uh, a lot of them come with their own programming cable, or they require a special programming cable. Like my Yesu here, I've shown you that I've made this cable before, and that even requires an extra little uh, Y splitter here. And uh, something like this uh, NESEQ has a special uh, TRS jack, which, come to think of it, I should try this in my Yesu and see if it works, uh, since it's the same kind of uh, connector. And uh, this Baofeng UV9G requires a watertight uh, specialty connector, which I don't even know where the programming cable for this one is. I, I have it somewhere. Uh, it's probably in a, in a box in the closet with all the extra programming cables because this is just a fraction of the programming cables I have. Having backups for these cables is awesome. It's great. Let's have those in a box somewhere um, where we know they're kept safe. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about today was the, the Mirkit or the Mirkit uh, FTDI USB programming cable. It's a 7-in-1 programming cable system. I reached out to them. I was, said I'm really interested in the unit. I said this having a ton of programming cables is a huge uh, annoyance for me. So if I could have one that makes up the majority of my cables, that would be great. So I reached out to them and asked for a loaner unit. So that's what we got here. So let's dig into it and see what we get. So what comes in the package is uh, just this. It's just a bag that says uh, Mirkit We Are Radio. Uh, claims benefits for extended warranty. Hey, let's zoom in. We'll take a look at all these. Uh, extended warranty, advanced support, uh, spezial firmware, lots of gifts. Okay. Um, scan to activate and guarantee your other benefits. So, uh, scan or go to mirkit.com. Okay, I'll check that out, I guess. Uh, but let's go into the. Well, before I go into this, I just want to say all I, all the only thing they asked of me when I reached out for a, a review unit was uh, I simply asked for a. that I looked like a really interesting product and that having a lot of cables was a headache for me. So, let's. I wanted to take a look at it, and the only thing they asked of me was to send the video when I was done. They didn't try to guide me or steer me in any way, so that's the first uh, thumbs up from them. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, grammatical errors, but it's, that can I can excuse that. Let's dig into this. Now, I, I know these aren't like the highest quality bags, but they're nicer than just regular plastic bags. I tend to repurpose these for connectors and things, so kind of like these big bags but uh, this is a review unit so I'm gonna have to send this back but let us dig in so inside we get uh, we get our uh, FTDI USB side and this just has a TRS jack I don't know if that's three pole or four poles maybe it's TRRS but uh, we have that and then we have all these different adapters. So, um, looks like we got a couple of them that are mirrored or similar in some sense. So, one of these is a K-type. I think this is K-type, technically. Um, but there's that. We have a couple 2.5 millimeter jacks. And uh, we have a 3.5 millimeter jack uh, TRS and a 3.5 millimeter jack TRRS. Uh, but if you look at the other side, it's just a T TRS. So, uh, and then on this side, we have our. This is the connector I was talking about for the Baofeng UV9G. So let's take a closer look at these. So if we look at these, let's start with one of these K-type plugs. Uh, there's a little tag on here. <clears throat> the little tag says, uh, "Model multifunction, made in China." two-way radio accessories. It says something in, I assume, Chinese here, and it says, don't throw it away. 
on the other side it says K310 slash 3207, etc. I don't know what that means. Uh, the other K type plug, it says the same thing on this side multi, multi, model multifunction, and then it says here HTC500 slash TC600, etc. And it's about the same for all of these M88S. 3688, etc. And A A8, etc. Uh, y VX160, VX168. Uh, I'm going to assume this is Yesu. Uh, then we have I F26, uh, F14. And then here we just says UV9R because this is. <laughs> Well, I think it's one of the only radios that uses this kind of a uh, connector. So, uh, I don't know what most of these are for, but uh, I think that I could maybe use some context clues like the K or in uh, this one over here with the YVX160168. This is, I'm going to bet that this is the ASU cable. Um, and, uh, I think we can look at the Amazon listing and maybe gleam some more information as well. So let's go take a look at that and then once we're done looking at that we'll try to program some radios with these. Alright so here over here on the Facebook page it's actually Prime Big Deals Day so it's actually on a little bit of a discount in uh, 1820 so 32% off apparently and uh, you get another 5% uh, if you sign in. So hey my, now might be the time to get this. Uh, I, after, after I test this, I might go ahead and pick this up. And hopefully I get this out before Prime Deals is over. And you guys can use my uh, affiliate link in the description. Uh, so to see if this is a, really a good deal, what we can do is uh, we can actually copy this um, URL. If we go to a site called Camel Camel Camel, you can just paste the link in here. You see I've already got it pulled up, but it pulls up here and it actually tells you, hey, that's, that's a good deal. Uh, 2275 uh, is what they considered a good deal. And if you look here, you can see the price history. So, um, oops, that sent me back. I didn't want to do that. Uh, but yeah, so if you see here, you can kind of see that it usually hovers around $28, $29. And then they have some sales once in a while. So back over here on this page, let's try to glean some more information on what all these connectors are. Uh, so if we go to this second page here, uh, we can see that we've got our cable here. We know that that goes to the computer. Uh, and if you look here, some of these are uh, Motorola, uh, which unfortunately I don't have any Motorola style radio, so I don't know that I'm going to be able to test those. But uh, here's an ICOM cable. And uh, yeah, it looks like that four pole is the ASU cable. And there is uh, a, a Kenwood slash Baofeng. And then there's an HYT cable. And then also the uh, Baofeng UV9R. Uh, if you look down here, it says not compatible with Motorola XPR, XIR, DP, DGP, and APX. And I assume this, I believe these use uh, specialty connectors, much like uh, this. They use some kind of like uh, pogo pin contact pad thing, I believe. So apparently this works with the latest uh, Windows and Mac. Um, I assume since this is just FTDI and all we're doing is swapping some pins around here at this this side, uh, if you also have an FTDI chip working with your Linux system, I assume this would also work, but it seems like they only support with uh, Windows and Mac. There is a nice braid on this cable. I don't know that that lends to the quality of the cable inside the braid, but at least the braiding outside seems to be nice. Um, oh, upon the request, we will share the special firmware and Mercat channel list for flashing your Baofeng analog radio. I have not asked them about this, so I think uh, I will request to see what channels they give. Uh, and then here is just some, oh, they actually say in this one, it says work with Mac OS and Ubuntu. Um, it says yes here. So uh, there you go. Uh, at least on this page here, it says that it works with it. So let's take a look at the rest of the, uh, the listing and see if there's anything else. Okay, and it looks like down here, we have a list of all compatible radios. So we've got UV5R, UV9R, uh, 5RA+. There's a lot of these, so I'm not gonna read all of them. Um, I'm curious about the UV9G because that is the one I have. Um, I'm going to ass uh, assume that it's kind of this, 
Um, so this is the same manufacturer. We'll see if that one works, but it's not explicitly called out. So uh, I won't really hold it against them if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, but I will call it out. Uh, then there's Kenwood radios, uh, Redivis, Radio Oddity. Uh, I believe I have a uh, GA510, so we'll see if that works. But that, again, that's just a Kenwood connector, so if it works for these Kenwood connectors, it should work for these Kenwood connectors. So, uh, Wushun, I don't have any Wushuns, or Archels, um, Archel, Arcel. Uh, I unfortunately don't have an ICOM radio, but I do have a, a Yesu, so I'll be using, I'll be attempting my Yesu. And then there's Motorola A-A8IF26F14, and then explicitly calls out not compatible with XPR, XIR, DP, DPG, APX. And if we scroll down, they actually have a different model, which is just a six in one, and it looks like it just omits the UV9R connector and this is what I was hoping would be included in in the package but uh, the user guide just simply says indoor outdoor usage outdoor indoor recommended uses for product products programming and flashing and two-way radios um, so we'll hook it up and we'll see what it says uh, let's you can guys go check out the reviews for yourself so I have just downloaded the latest chirp this is chirp next uh, 2024-1003 on Python 3.10, WX Python 4.2, Phoenix on WX Widgets 3.20. Uh, I'm gonna plug in the uh, cable. Uh, I have nothing else plugged in. We're gonna start with the UV5R since that is the quintessential uh, $18, it can do anything radio. So let's plug this in. I believe this is the UV5R programming half so you we literally just uh plug it in and now let me turn my uv5r on and i believe this is a genuine uv5r i do have a counterfeit uh but i believe this is one of the genuine ones plug our radio in let's select com port 22 let's select foo fling let's select uv5r okay yeah that's fine it's a radio this is also why you should always download your firmware first read from the radio then write don't just go ahead and just eat your your uh, firmware up so let's hit go radio off connect cable make sure the connector is firmly seated turn your radio on volume well, may need to be at 100 percent. so let's do that ensure that radio is tuned to a channel with no activity correct uh click ok to download image from device so okay there we go, we get the red light. And the um the FTDI chip lights up too, which is it looks really cool. Like green and blue and red. And there we go. Hey, look at that. That is my program downloaded. So let's go ahead and test this. Let's change um let's add a channel zero here. So it's gonna be uh I think adventure frequency, right? Now let's go to radio. Let's go to upload. Same thing, port 22. Make sure you can see the screen here. Hit okay. Okay, volume's all the way up. Right. It's blinking. It's blinking. Here we go. Get a VFO or get a memory. And here we go. Channel zero. ADV, just like I programmed. So um, I kind of expected that one to work. That's like the bare minimum entry. Like if if the UV5R doesn't work, how is this even a product? So this works, perfect. All right, let's grab another radio. Um, like I said, if if a cheap Chinese K-tub K-type works, then any K-type cheap Chinese will work with that connector. So. Um, I think I'll try another one or two just to be safe, but I don't think I'm going to include it in the video. Uh, what I'm really interested in is that UV9R, UV9G. So let's try that one. Now, when I first picked this up, I did not think that it had a screw in here, but it does. It's just a small little black screw. Um, I've seen on the tech, I think it's tech prepper. I think I saw that he gets uh, extended knurled thumb screws that will fit in here. 
um, I would go check out his channel if you want to find out about that. I need to get a couple of those for this. So basically I have taken the side off here and we're just gonna click this up here and screw it in. Now it is a Phillips head and the standard one on here is a uh, flat head. So that is, that is one thing. That's, that's a little annoying. I have to have a different bit, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so let's turn this on. If we see here, we got, got my GMRS call sign, my real call sign. And then this is a GMRS radio, by the way, if you were unsure, let's go ahead and, and connect this up. You can close this UV5R1 to radio, download from source. UV nine G this driver is a beta version. Please save unedited copy. Yes. Yes. I accept the risk. All right. So hit okay. Um, connect your radio to the interface cable. There we go. Now this, I guess this doesn't have any blinky lights, but it is downloading on the screen. There we go. Looks like it downloaded. So, uh, Let's change something like, uh, let's do double, double names because, uh, I'm gonna have this just in a bag for anybody and they don't need to know frequencies. So we'll do that. So both of them should be, uh, show up as a frequency now and yeah, let's just go with that for now. So radio upload and go. There we go. Radio restarts. Yep. There we go. They're both displaying name now. So, Hey, that one works as well. That's awesome. So if we look down here at our supported devices, ASU VX 160, 168. Um, I don't know where that falls with this, but this is VX seven R. The reason I don't think that this is going to work is that all the documentation I have seen specifically calls out the two and a half millimeter side uh to program with and this is a three and a half millimeter for the asu uh, now there are a couple two and a half millimeters so i will try that what i want to try is i want to try the yesu cable and then i just got uh, a bunch of uh changers from uh size changes for trs so we'll we'll try that we'll see if that works uh, i'm also using um uh, VX seven commander instead of chirp because it has a lot more options that lets me, uh, change things that chirp does not. So if you're wondering why this is a different program, that is why. So next up we have the NESEC U, uh, I think it's WP Whiskey Pete 9900, 9900. And that uses a three and a half millimeter track for data. So let's see if this one works. Let's go download from radio. Uh, NESEC U, WP, uh, yes. And, um, okay. It's on the data cables attached. We hit okay and error reading from radio. Well, that's a bummer that that one doesn't work, but again, that's not on the supported list. Um, but I did just have a thought and let me get back and try something. So the idea I had was, uh, if the cable they provide the ends didn't work for the radio I was using, why don't I just make my own that plug into it? So let's see if this works now. So this, this, I believe is the right pin out. It's just a straight through three and a half millimeter cable for the uh, NESEC U WP9900. Okay, we have our radio on, our new cable plugged in, and let's just see what happens. And look at that, it's working with our own cable that connects to this. So I think that's really cool. Uh, this is a really cool thing that uh, if you get this, it covers most of your radios. And then if you got a, an odd radio here or there that has 
a different kind of cable, you can probably make one or, or find something that'll plug into it and let you download. So there we go. There's that. And then let's give it the, uh, let's give her the old upload. Make sure that that's working as well. So I bet what this means is that I can, uh, make my own cable for my Yaesu VX7, uh, just like I did it before. Well, would you look at that? It works perfectly. I think that that is a much better solution. This is a cleaner solution to have this jack here, and then I can have this swap in and out, um, rather than what I did last time with my Yaesu VX7. And, uh, you know, as I said, these are prototyping ends. I could actually just make a, a cable using uh, some ends like this. I'll put links to these down below. I, I quite like these. So now let's talk about this. Do I recommend this? Uh, if you would have asked me a week ago, I would have said, um, you know, if you don't feel like making your own uh, cable, like I could probably add, I have three and a half millimeter jacks, I could probably add that to here and have the same kind of system set up here. Uh, I probably would have said you can make it yourself, uh, but in the wake of Hurricane Helene, I listened to the repeater a lot. There were a lot of hams that were not familiar with the radio, and uh, I think having a kit like this, which has a bunch of different ends, uh, would is probably really beneficial if there's ever a scenario where you might need to program somebody else's radio. Uh, this, I think this is for $20. This is a nice, like, I could put this in my grab-and-go tech bag. And, uh, you know, as long as I know that it programs my radios and a couple extra other people's radios, that's, I think that's pretty good. So for $20, I think I'm going to, I think I will recommend this. I think this is a pretty good uh, piece of kit. And also, like I said, you can... You can make your own uh, ends to kind of go along with it to uh, expand the usefulness of this. So for that reason, I think I do recommend this. I think that this is a much cleaner solution than with what I've come up with here. So uh, I'm going to have an affiliate link for this in the description. But also, if you want to tackle this on your own, I mean, we're hams, we like to do it ourselves. I definitely think that that's also worth a tackle. Um, I'll keep, I'll put a link into, this is my, uh, the uh, three conductor wire that I really like. Um, I'll put this link in there. I'll also include links to these uh, three and a half millimeter ends and these three and a half millimeter female ends. And uh, if I can find these prototyping ends, I bought these a long time ago, but if I can find these, I'll also include these because I think these are really useful just to do something like this to where I could just quickly and easily strip a couple wires, stick them together, see if something works. Then when I know it works, I can go ahead and say, okay, let's put some legit ends on there, kind of uh, button up the project, make it look a little bit nicer. And with that, this is the Brokeham saying, build it, buy it, modify it. 73.